Well, I don't know about y'all, but that ain't too nice of a view. Maybe I need a fence. That ain't too good looking either. Maybe we need a fence. Hey, now there we go. That's the kind of fence I'm talking about. And that's what we're doing today. Let's go. One of the first things I did was decide to work smart and not hard. I bought a post hole digger. You can buy these gas powered ones. You can buy electric ones. This is an auger. It's got an 8 inch bit. You want to put your post 36 inches in the ground. You want to put, you know, you want to do it right. Get you one of these, man. Save your back and do it the right way. I put my post 3 feet in the ground. Now, 6 inches of that, I put in some gravel and some rocks and stuff like that. So my post is actually 2.5 foot. And on the bottom of that, I have the gravel and the rocks. Because what's going to happen over time is that's going to keep that bottom of that, that post from rotting out. Now you Use all pressure treated wood. I decided to go with some 1x6x10 by by foot long pressure treated pine boards. The reason for this is I wanted to be able to maximize the distance between my posts. My 4x4 four four posts are about roughly 9 foot apart, so I did have to trim off a little bit. But keep in mind, when you do buy those boards, you're going to want to square off both ends because they don't always come you know, with a square edge from the factory. So I'd cut one end, flip it around, pull my measurement, and go ahead and give me another square cut on the other side. So let's go ahead and get our material stacked up and get ready to cut. So once I got all my boards cut to the length, now you're seeing me go along and I'm putting my first board down, making sure it's uh, in line with the previous section. Then I'm going to throw my level on there, make sure it's level. And after that, you just get you another board, lay it on top of that one while you grab your 2x2. Two two. You want to slide the 2x2 two two in there now. Don't, don't, uh, I saw a video where a guy had everybody doing it at the last step. You don't want to do that. You're going to kill yourself. You want to get that 2x2 two two in spot in, it, in its place as soon as possible because then after that, as you lay each board, as you can see, I don't even have to attach them to the post. I can just keep setting them in until I get all the way to my 12th board, which is going to be six foot fence. And all that math's already done. That's why I'm doing 12 boards in each section, just so you know, because that equals out to be a six foot tall fence. Now, the posts are still sticking out, but we'll talk about cutting them off later. But definitely get those two by, ten, uh, two by twos in there right away and save yourself from even having to put any nails or screws or anything until you get to the 12th board and then start the process all over. So guys, I was trying to explain a few things here and it was pretty windy. <clears throat> I had my one of my daughters holding the camera for me and I was explaining how, you know, if you're doing this by yourself, it can be done. I, I had a guy ask me one time, hey, how do you build a fence by yourself? I said the same way you build it if you have five or six people. It's no different. It just takes longer. Post, you run your string and blah, blah, blah. So. You know, just know how to learn how to hook your tape in the right place, and you don't have to hold your tape in the middle of the post to get center to center. You can hook outside to outside, inside to inside. That's what I was trying to explain here. And also, um, your poles, 
your, your posts don't have to be a certain exactly eight foot. You know, it doesn't matter, man. Just make everything even. As long as you keep a consistent or pretty consistent line, you know, nobody's going to care. And then right there, what I'm telling people is, you know, when you're nailing your boards there at the end, try to nail them <clears throat> together up and down vertically or, uh, yeah, instead of next to each other. That way, when you come back, you can cover those up with the one by fours.